Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a problem that is very similar to the previous one with one big difference that we're now pulling downward to open up the gate instead of sideways and it does make a difference. Let's see why. Well first of all remember that to find the angle between the reaction force and the normal force that's going to be found by taking the arctangent of the kinetic coefficient of friction which is equal to 11.3 degrees. We're going to need that later. Notice that the radius of the bearing is 2 centimeters and the radius about which the force acts is going to be 10 centimeters. We have the weight of the gate and the weight of the counterweight right here. And of course the distance where the center of gravity is of those two weights. Now we're going to find the force by summing up the moments acting on this gate. The sum of the moments about point zero, that would be the center point right there, is equal to zero and let's add them all up. We have the 200 Newton force acting in a clockwise direction, so that's minus 200 and the distance would be 1.5 meters and then we have the 500 Newton force caused a counterclockwise moment, so it's plus 500 times 0 0.5 and what else do we have? We have the reaction force now from the video a couple videos ago we remember that the reaction force and first of all it's going to be a clockwise direction so it's minus it'll be r times the moment arm which is r1 times the sine of the angle phi and we'll find out in just a moment what that is and then finally we have to find the force here which is going to give us a hmm, counterclockwise direction that's plus f times the moment arm, that would be the full 10 centimeters, right there, so 0 0.1 meter. Now when you look at this and you look at the previous video, you say, well, what's the difference? Well, there's one big difference, because normally the reaction force is equal to the magnitude of the weight bearing on the axle. But in this case, it's not just the 500 newtons and the 200 newtons, it's also the force by which we pull. All three forces are acting downward and the reaction force is counteracting that. So in this case, the reaction force is the sum of the 700 newtons plus the force that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and plug that in and simplify things a little bit here. So we get 0 is equal to minus 300 plus 250. And here we get minus R. Now R is going to be the sum of the 700 newtons plus F. So it'll be 700 newtons plus F times R1, which is 2 centimeters, 0 0.02, times the sine of 11.3 degrees. And then plus 0.1 F. Now notice in this equation, we get F twice. So when we solve for F, we have to pull it out of both terms. Now let's simplify this a little bit more. So 0 is equal to minus 50 and minus 700 times this times this. Let's see what that is equal to. 700 times 0 0.02 times 11.3 takes a sign equals that's uh, minus 2.74 and now we have minus F times this. So 0 0.02 times 11.3 takes a sign of that equals so that would be minus 0.004F and then plus 0.1F. Make sure I get the signs right. So this is a negative and that's a plus. There we go. Now we're good. Now solving this for F, moving the F to the other side, we get a minus 0.1F plus 0.004F is equal to combining these two 52.74 and then combining these two we get minus 0.096 f equals and that should be a minus shouldn't it yeah minus 52.74 and f is equal to minus 52.74 divided by minus 0.096 all right let's see what that's equal to 52.74 divided by 0 0.096 equals and 
that would be F is equal to 549 Newtons. Now notice that this will be slightly more than what we found in the previous video. The reason for that is that not only does the reaction force have to counterbalance the weight and the load of the axle, we also have to counterbalance the force here in order to open up the gate, therefore causing additional friction and therefore causing additional force required opening up the gate. And that's how it's done.